Hey there everyone, Tyler here with Vole, and I'm back today to talk to you about which of our shovel options is the right one for you and your backcountry kit. There's a few categories that you're going to want to pay attention to when shopping for a backcountry shovel, and that is the weight, the size, the grip type, and the special features that each model has. All of our shovels feature pinholes in the blade, so you can secure rope or carabiners to it if you ever need to make a rescue sled in the backcountry or set up a snow anchor. With the exception of the XLM, all of our shovels come in a standard version and a mini version. Here we have our hoeback shovel, which is highlighted by its feature to turn this standard shovel into hoe mode for quick digging in rescue situations. A few other key features of our hoeback shovels is a flat blade, for ease of use when doing snow study out in the field. Both our standard hoback and our hoback mini come with the option to get a D-shaped handle, which is better for those with mittens and also features a longer shaft. The hoback shovel also has a push pin near the handle that allows you to extend the shaft when you're shoveling. Here we have our XLM shovel, which is for those who are counting ounces or who just want the lightest, most stowable option that we have. The XLM does not feature an extendable handle, it just has one option, and also features our smallest and lightest shaft and blade. If you have a preference for the lightest gear out there and you want something that's very minimalist in your backcountry kit, the XLM is the shovel for you. Here we have the Telepack and the Telepro, which are the quintessential backcountry shovel. There's no frills here, nothing too crazy or exciting in terms of features, it's just simple and solid, and that's what we like here at Belay. The Telepro shovel features a D-shaped handle, which is best for those with mittens, and it also features a longer shaft. So if you're trying to move the most amount of snow possible in the quickest amount of time, this is the one for you. The Telepack features a T-shaped handle, which works well for those without mittens, and it also features a shorter shaft, so it's just a little bit more stowable and a little bit more lightweight than the Telepro. Here we have our T-wood shovel, which is essentially the same as the Telepack, except it has a saw blade within the shaft. The blade inside of the T-wood can be accessed by pushing in on the two push pins near the base of the shaft, and then pushing them in one more time once it's popped out to reveal the blade. We found that most people like to use this saw for cutting down limbs of trees, gathering branches for firewood, or just tearing into that summit sandwich. This shovel is a popular option among snowmobilers or those who like to do a little bit of snow study out in the field, while the right backcountry shovel can often get overlooked, it's important to have one in your kit that works best for the things that you're pursuing in the backcountry. We hope this video helped you decide what backcountry shovel is the right option for you and your kit. Stay safe out there, folks, and we hope to see you at the skin track. Some avalanche shovels can be used in either traditional mode or home mode, like the Dozer 2H. Traditional mode is more for chopping hard snow, like avalanche debris. Hoe mode is more for moving soft snow, like if your snowmobile is stuck, or if somebody's up front chopping the debris and somebody is in the back pulling it out. You don't want to be swinging a hoe mode shovel inside the hole in close quarters. Somebody could get hurt that way, including the victim. The two-way shovel can be converted from traditional mode straight into home mode. In really hard avalanche debris, you may need to actually stomp on the top of the shovel blade like a gardening spade. And that's why we have this stomp edge on the, all of our dozer shovels. You're just gonna fucking do it because you're Bruce Edgerly and you know this shit. In this episode, we're going to talk about probing, and we're also going to talk about shoveling. Shoveling is what takes us the longest in an avalanche rescue, and it's also very physically draining. So we're going to talk about some strategies that we can use to efficiently and effectively remove snow with one person or with multiple people. So what we have going on here is we have one buried person, one missing person, two searchers. And we're taking it just from a fine search. We took our skis off at about 10 meters. And now we're just, I'm pinpointing. Okay, Jason, I have two meters. Take out your shovel and probe. So I'd have Jason take out the rescue gear while I just double check, really zone in on that smallest number that I'm finding. Okay. It's a meter 30 right here. So I'm gonna wanna mark that spot. Right, meter 30, Jason's got his probe out. Would you put together my gear after you get that? So I'm having him just put together my gear. I'm gonna start to probe. 
when I'm probing, I'm looking for a change in depth or I'm looking for a spongy feeling. We really want to make sure that when we get a probe strike that it's a probe strike. The last thing we want to do is dig for 10 or 15 minutes and then realize we just hit a firm piece of snow. So as I'm probing, I'm, I'm spiraling out, not leaving a space greater than if someone were standing straight up and down in the snow. All right, there it is, probe strike. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at my probe. I'm gonna see that's at about 130 centimeters right there. If I have another probe really handy, I might just wanna go ahead and be like, yep, 130, that's another probe strike, okay. We're gonna leave that probe in. Now, what we're gonna do with two diggers, since it's over a meter deep, I'm gonna start digging right at the probe and Jason's gonna move plus time and a half downhill from the probe and start digging there. And what I wanna accomplish is I wanna have a slope that goes into the bottom of the probe I don't want it to be greater than 25 degrees, so snow's not rolling back into that. And I also want it to be about arm's width wide, so that when I get to the person, it's not just a little air hole, but it's I'm able to actually bring that person, excavate that person from the snow and lay them on that platform. They need to have air, but they also need to be able to expand their lungs and take a breath. If we, get a, if we get a probe strike with two searchers, one missing person at about 90 or less than a meter deep, what we're gonna do then is Jason and I are gonna be side by side and we're gonna take one step back from the probe and start digging right there. If we had another person in this scenario, they would be downhill of us digging in from the downhill side, or they would be removing our snow once we start moving it downhill. So if there are four people, five people, we're just lining up and removing snow, especially in a deep burial. And this person was buried 215 centimeters or more. What we'd want to do is the first person would start up here. We're just putting our shovel on our hip for spacing and we're just keeping that spacing going with multiple people. And what we're doing is we're just digging down. We're removing snow to the side, both of us. And then we're just pushing it back. And then I'd be pushing it back towards Jason. He'd be pushing it to the side if he can, or he'd be just pushing it back to the next person. So it really is important to use these strategic shoveling techniques effectively and efficiently. Digging takes the most amount of time and it's also extremely tiring and takes a lot of energy. So we want to make sure that if you're in back and you see the person up front starting to slow down, you can tell them to rotate. If you're up front, please try to notice that you're slowing down and you're digging and rotate. These videos are a great first step, but I highly recommend taking an avalanche course and practicing with your avalanche rescue gear before you head out into the backcountry this season. At Arva, we've been designing avalanche rescue equipment for over 30 years. The lightweight, compact, high-performance Plume TS shovel combines the shoveling efficiency of a telescopic shovel with our new extremely lightweight blade specifically designed for ski touring. Made with the highest quality heat-treated aluminum alloys, the incredibly robust and durable Plume TS weighs only 480 grams. The Plume TS's pinlock locking mechanism makes assembling the blade and shaft quick and easy. The 76 centimeter long telescopic shaft deploys quickly and the ergonomic handle is easy to grip. A reliable tool without the extra weight, the Plume TS is ideal for the demanding backcountry skier looking for a lightweight shovel that performs well in any situation. This is the Saleva Razor SL Shovel. In case of an avalanche, you need strong and light tools. This is why the Razor SL is popular among mountain guides and other professionals. With its sharp blade edge, it cuts through avalanche snow. It's made from rigid, tempered aluminium. The ergonomic and telescopic shaft is perfect for handling. The horizontal thread zones make footwork possible without slipping. 
and together with the strong Saleva pre-cut master cord, you can even use the shovel as a snow anchor if required. The Saleva Razor SL is as well thought as it is engineered. A truly reliable avalanche shovel. Yeah. <laughs>